<clears throat> I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. His pardon is in prayer. Great and almighty God, we come in thy presence, O Master, this uh, blessed Sunday morning to worship you, to praise you, and to glorify your holy name. We pray, O Lord, this time may be a blessed time for all of us. For we know, Master, where two or three are gathered in thy name, there you are in the midst of them, and we know you are there in our midst this morning. You know, Master Lord, that uh, the windows of heaven have opened upon us and your blessings have started flowing upon us uh, right now. Yes, Father Lord, we come at each one of us and those who are still coming to thy almighty arms, pray that this may be a time of God when we are able to exalt and extol your name upon him. Time of God, we just commit ourselves in thy almighty arms. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's continue worshipping the Lord by turning in our song books at this time to song 130, 130, song 130. We'll rise to our feet and join in this beautiful hymn. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. <clears throat> I'll read one part of the verse. You can respond with the next. <clears throat> Psalms 90. Lord, you have been a dwelling place throughout all generations before the mountains were born or you brought forth the earth and the world. From everlasting to everlasting you are God. You turn men back to dust. Saying, return to dust, O sons of men. For a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by or like a watch in the night you sweep men away in the sleep of death they are like the new grass of the morning though in the morning it springs up new by evening it is dry and withered right from verse 13 to verse 17 uh, relent O lord how long will it be have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love. That we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us. For as many years as we have seen trouble. May your deeds be shown to your servants. Your splendor to thy children. 
May the favor of the Lord our God rest upon us. Establish the works of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Let's bow our heads and pray. Almighty and gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we come to thy presence, O Lord, with a heart of thanksgiving, with a heart full of gratitude, O Master, for all the good things that you've done in our life. You have been our refuge and our strength, O Lord. You have been our ever-present help in trouble. You have been our safety and our guide, O Lord. You are the one, O Lord, who has guarded us when we went out and came in. All your promises, O Master, that are there in your word have come true, O Lord, for each one of us in these past days. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we are uh, the apple of your eye, O God. We are, Lord, carved on the palm of your hand. We are ever before you. There's not a moment, O Lord, that your eyes are turned away from us. Each one of us, God, are valuable in thy sight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness and mercy in our lives. And thank you, Lord, for giving us a new identity. The identity, O Lord, of being your sons and your daughters. And Lord, what a great price you have to pay for the same, the price of your only son. Because he who was God himself came down to the earth, God lived a life of a normal human being and yet went to the cross. And there on the cross, the Lord, we believe that our sins have been taken by him because he who knew no sin became sin for us. There, o Lord, he was bruised, O Master, Lord, for our transgressions and wounded for our iniquities. That which Isaiah had, Lord, had prophesied in Isaiah chapter 53 came true, O Lord, in your Son, Jesus Christ. Like a sheep to be slaughtered, and as it keeps dumb, O Lord, so our Lord Jesus Christ did not open his mouth. Even there on the cross, O Lord, we know that he won over Satan by keeping his mouth shut, O Master, and thus keeping himself clean. Rather, Lord, there were blessings that came out from his, uh, on his lips. Father, forgive them, for they do not they know not what they do. Yes, Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your sacrifice, that which was ordained even before the foundation of the world, came true in and through you. But at the right time, as even as Paul tells us in Galatians chapter 4, that you, O Lord, were born of woman, born under the law, so that you could redeem us from the power of the law. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you have done for us. And thank you, Holy Spirit God, that you are there with us. Our Lord Jesus Christ won over death, and in his resurrected state, as the captain of the new race that he had founded, he was taken up to heaven in the sight of his disciples. And we know that he is seated at the right hand of God the Father, in the place of authority. But you have not left us alone, O God, because we know that you sent your Spirit, even as our Lord Jesus Christ had rightly said. On the day of Pentecost, Holy Spirit God, you came down, and you are the one who convicts us, convinces us of the judgment that is to come of our own sinfulness. 
who interprets the word for us, who is our comforter and our guide. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your, your ministry in our lives. And we ask for your continued ministry because we know that it is there, it is when you are there with us that we are not orphans. It is through all that our Lord Jesus Christ has done that we are sons and daughters and because Holy Spirit God you have come in us, you are not only a seal of the fact that we belong to God the Father, but also Lord we know that you are the first installment of the greater things that await us. The engagement ring that guarantees the marriage that is to come. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your... Thank you, Triune God, for your ministry in our lives. Thank you for making us your sons and daughters, giving us a new identity. Uh, for we know, Master Lord, that uh, if we were left on our, on our own, we would all go to eternal damnation. And at this time, God, even though you have saved us, we know that we are sinful. In this process of sanctification, O Lord, we know that we are going forward towards that goal of uh, eternity and also that goal, O Lord, of becoming like the Lord Jesus Christ. But till we attain that full measure of the Lord Jesus Christ, we know, Lord, that we will keep on falling. And Lord, we ask forgiveness for everything that we have committed against you in thought, word, and deed. Whether it's the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, pray, O Lord, that you will cleanse us from all these things that we can truly walk, O Lord, as thy sons and servants, Lord, that your name be glorified in and through us. We commit ourselves in the hands, once again, O Lord, thanking you for your goodness in our lives, goodness of provision, O Master, goodness of security, O God, right here in this world, and also Master of uh, eternal security and all other good material and spiritual blessings that you've given us in our life and you keep giving us day by day. Lord, we just commit ourselves in thy almighty arms. We ask this all in the most precious name of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Alright, we are going to read from the Word of God at this time. Uh, two readings. The first is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 34. And verses 1 to 12, Deuteronomy chapter 34, and verses 1 to 12. And uh, I'll request Mona to lead us in that reading, and then uh, Sudeep can lead us in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, and verses 1 to 8. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, and verses 1 to 8. The first reading is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 34, verses 1 to 12. Death of Moses. Then Moses climbed Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab to the top of Pisgah, across from Jericho. There the Lord showed him the whole land from Gilead to Dan, all of Naphtali, and the territory of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah, as far as the western sea, the Negev, and the whole region from the valley of Jericho, the city of Palms, as far as Zoar. Then the Lord said to him, This is the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, when I said, I will give it to your descendants. I, will, I have let you see it with your eyes, but... You will not cross over into it. And Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in Moab, as the Lord had said. He buried him in Moab, in the valley opposite Beth Peor. But to this day, no one knows where his grave is. Moses was a hundred and twenty years old when he died. Yet his eyes were not weak, nor his strength gone. The Israelites grieved for Moses in the plains of Moab thirty days until the time of weeping and mourning was over. Now Joshua, son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hand on him. So the Israelites listened to him and did what the Lord had commanded Moses. Since then, no prophet has risen 
in Israel like Moses whom the Lord knew face to face all who did all, who did all those uh, miraculous signs and wonders the Lord sent him to do in Egypt to Pharaoh and to all his officials and to his whole land for no one has ever shown the mighty power and performed the awesome deeds that Moses did in the sight of all Israel this is the word of God The New Testament reading is taken from 1st Thessalonians chapter 2 1st Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 1 to 8 1st Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 1 to 8 and it reads You know brothers that a visit to you was not a failure we had previously suffered and been insulted in Philippi as you know but with the help of our God we dared to tell you his gospel in spite of strong opposition For the appeal we make does not spring from error or impure motives nor are we trying to trick you on the contrary we speak as men approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel we are not trying to please men but God who tests our heart you know we never used flattery nor did we put on a mask to cover up greed God is our witness we are not looking for praise from men not from you or anyone else as apostles of Christ we could have been a burden to you but we were gentle among you like a mother caring for her little children we loved you so much that we are, that we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of god but our lives as well because you had become so dear to us Good morning everyone. Let's start by worshiping and praising his holy name because when we are down and in distress, he is the one who reaches out and lifts us up. This song says, "Oh glory to God, he has lifted me up. He has lifted me up, I know. He reached out his hand and he lifted me up and that's why I love him so." Oh glory to God, he has lifted me up. He has lifted me up. Jesus has done for us in our day-to-day -day lives in our family in our professional lives in our relationship and church and of course the greatest thing he has done for us is that he has died he sacrificed himself for our sins so let us our testimony be an inspiration for all that everyone should know who he is and what he has done for us everybody ought to know Everybody ought to know Everybody ought to know Who Jesus is Everybody ought to know Everybody ought to know Everybody ought to know Who Jesus is
to God as a living sacrifice, asking Him to renew us and refine us, that in our weakness He would be glorified. Lord, I come to you, let my heart be
by the power of your love. Yeshu Masih. Father in heaven, Father in heaven, even as we have bowed down in thy presence, O Lord, to bring our intercessions to you, we thank you and praise the Lord for this privilege you have given us. Yes, Lord, you do want us to pray because your word tells us so. We see Abraham, O Lord, interceding for Sorov and Gomorrah Master, and whatever he said, you agreed to that, O Lord. In Ezekiel chapter 22, O Lord, you were astonished that there was no one to stand between you and the people. Yes, Lord, this is the greatest privilege you've given us to stand, O Lord, in the gap. And Father, at this time, we want to pray, O Lord, for the all the parts of the world where there are issues, problems, war, terrorism, uh, master, whether it is in uh, Israel, O Lord, and Gaza, or Ukraine and Russia, o Lord, all the damage that is being done to human life, to property, Lord, we pray that you will stop, O Lord, this, these wars, O Master. And let a sense of order come back, O Lord, to these places. Many other places, O Lord, we see so much of unrest. Ask, Lord, to give your peace, O Lord, to the people. Yes, Father, Lord, we 
pray for those areas the master where there are with this famine of master people are without food especially a master we can see that in see this in places like uh, africa and father in many other places where people sleep without food every day in our own country oh lord we see that happening ask for your grace and mercy lord upon all such people father lord we pray for our own country all the issues and problems that it has whether it's uh, poverty oh lord or its corruption master or its uh, a spiritual darkness in which people live we just commit our country in the hands praying oh lord that father you will reach out your hand oh master and bless this country all the work that's being done in your name lord we ask your blessings upon that yes father lord the mission work that's being done in far flung areas ask you lord to bless all those who have given the lives lord for this very purpose and all new believers lord those who have believed upon you ask you lord to bless them at this time i pour them in the mighty arms stand in the faith of god we pray where lord your word is not gone because we know in several villages the lord your word is not gone in several cities the master your word has not reached pray oh lord for all such people and all such places where your word is not there that you will send out laborers a master to go and work oh lord and to bring in the harvest father lord we pray for the church oh lord as a whole but they not come to your outside that you will bless the church bless all those who are involved oh master lord in the ministry of the church And Lord, we pray that you may expand the territory, O God, expand the tent, O Lord, of the Church of Master. Many more ministries may spring up. Yes, Lord, along with the proclamation of the gospel, we may see the ministry of advocacy, the ministry of uh, counselling, or the ministry, O Lord, of uh, just taking care of the poor, Lord, rising up in our country. Yes Lord there are so many of our youths Lord in our country who commit suicide whether it's youth or Lord or it's women so many of them Lord commit suicide every day pray Lord that the church may rise up Lord to this occasion to this problem that is there and we may see O Lord church is starting counseling ministries in various parts of the country where people can come O Lord and be counseled O Master Yes, Father Lord, we pray, Master Lord, for uh, the City Light Fellowship. Thank you for the wonderful way that you have led us in the past many years now. Ask your blessings, O Lord, upon this church. I ask your blessings upon each one who comes here, Lord. I'll continue to bless them, take care of the needs, uphold them in their mighty arms, Master. Ask Lord to bless them, O Lord, in their uh, workplaces, in their uh, businesses. in in their homes of master in the relationships between husbands and wives and children and parents in every relationship oh lord we pray that you may be present in them ask your special blessings upon the children oh lord even as they grow up with so much of uh, chaos uh, in the world ask you lord to give them your protection master keep your angels around them is a humble prayer of father surround them with your angels oh master lord we pray Yes, Father Lord, we pray, Master Lord, for all the work that you have called us to do. Thank you, Lord, for the Bible School, which we have been able to run the full year, and even as it comes to a close, Lord, in a month's time, pray that you, O Lord, will be O Master with uh, the students who are there, and help them, O Lord, to go out and uh, work for your glory, Master. Father Lord, we thank you for providing every need for the Bible School. and the coming year we pray that you will show us your will as to what we need to do and how we need to take this forward for the lord provide every need that would be there whether it's buildings or god or it's uh, other finances required because we know that this world belongs to you and there is nothing lord impossible for you we come at our church master in thy almighty arms god we pray this time lord for uh, those who are not well especially remembering remembering rebecca and also mr luko master ask you lord to reach out to them o god and heal them completely 
Father Lord, we want to pray for those who are celebrating their birthdays and anniversaries, and especially, Lord, we want to pray this time for uh, Mr. Sashi Lam, who celebrated his birthday last week, O Lord. Pray, Lord, for your special blessings, Lord, upon him, his health, his business, his family relationships, and all that he has in his mind, God, to do. And thank you for the way that you have led him and all that you have allowed him to do, O Lord. Pray, O Lord, that he may do many more things for you and for your glory in the days to come. Commit him, O Lord, in thy almighty arms. You know, pray at this time for Anushka, who celebrates her birthday, Lord, this week, that you'll reach out to her also, Lord, and uh, Father, take care of her needs. Even as she is far from her parents, pray that your hand of protection may be upon her. And uh, the work that you have given her to do, O Lord, we pray that uh, she may do it diligently, and your name be glorified in and through her life. Even as she celebrates her birthday, let it be a blessed day for her, is the humble prayer for her father. Father Lord, we just commit ourselves in the hands, praying that your name be glorified in and through our lives. Thank you, Lord, for all good things that you do in and through our lives, Master. We ask this all in the most precious name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord, be thy name and thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen a right, very warm welcome our dear friends to this worship service i welcome all of you in the most precious name of our lord and our savior jesus christ and uh, our next sunday service will be at uh, 10 o'clock and it will be a communion service, right? That being the first Sunday of the month, that will be a communion service, and all of us are invited for the same. And please come prepared to take a communion next Sunday. Our Bible study goes on uh, on uh, Wednesday evenings, uh, and so uh, please do join at 8 p.m. online. We also have another Bible study going on on Saturday morning at 9.30, 9.30 to 10.30. Each, uh, these Bible studies are exactly for one hour. So please do take out time and uh, join the Bible study. Right, uh, Karunra and the children have uh, come uh, here from Goa, so we would like to welcome them also in our midst. Uh, we celebrate our wedding anniversary today. All right, that is the third, thirty-ninth, thirty-ninth wedding anniversary. I have completed thirty-nine years of our married life and. Uh, uh, I'll request uh, Karuna to, to come and uh, just pray for us at this time. Okay. Let's pray. Our gracious, loving, and loving Heavenly Father, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. We praise you and worship you and glorify your holy, precious and matchless name, O Lord Jesus, for who you are and for what you have done for each one of us, our creator, our maker, our sustainer, our provider. We worship you and praise you, O Lord, for this special day, O Lord, which you have given to both mommy and papa, O Lord, in their lives, for blessing them for the past 39 years of their married lives and for being, the, being with them through all ups and downs of their lives, O Lord. And we can see the way you have blessed them with children and grandchildren, nourished them and enriched them, O Lord, in your love, in your knowledge, in your wisdom and understanding. O Lord, we pray that you may bless their togetherness, O Lord, and that they may be a blessing unto many, O Lord. Bless all the work that they do, bless the work of their hands, and increase them and fruitify them in all their plans and endeavors, O Lord. Lord Jesus, today, as a church, we submit their plans their purposes, their dreams and their desires into your mighty hands. Lord Jesus, even as they as a family serve you, O Lord, bless them, O Lord, that your name may be glorified and magnified in and through their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to sing one hymn at this time. Hymn number 148. Hymn number 148 will remain seated even as we sing this hymn and will bring our offerings unto the Lord at this time. Hymn number 148. Pass me not a gentle saviour, hear my humble cry, while and others thou art calling, do not pass me by. All right, we'll bring our offerings unto the Lord at this time. Pass me not. 
Lord, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. Why on earth dost thou art calling? Do not pass me by. Sweet relief, healing there in deep confusion, help my unbelief. Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. Why, Lord, does thou art called? Do not pass me by, trusting only in thy merit, would I seek thy face, even save me by thy grace, save Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Father Lord, every good gift belongs to you and we thank and praise you Lord for all good blessings that have given us in our life, God. Little that we have brought to you from that, Father, we pray that you may bless it and use it, Lord, for the extension of your kingdom. Pray, Lord, for your word, God, that your word may come alive to us, we may grow in your word, Master. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Right, the Gospel reading for today has been taken from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 22, and verses uh, 34 to 46. Matthew 22, and verses uh, 34 onwards, right at the end of the chapter. And it reads, uh, Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert of the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, What do you think about 
about the Christ, whose son is he? The son of David, they replied. He said to them, How is it that uh, David, speaking by the Spirit, calls him Lord? For he says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one could say a word in reply, and from that day on, no one dared to ask him any more questions. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading and hearing of his holy word. All right, this is our text for today, and uh, uh, we will uh, combine the other text that we have read from Deuteronomy, from Psalms, and also from the New Testament. And uh, the title for today's message is, Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? Uh, Matthew chapter 21 and 22 is, uh, uh, are those chapters where we see a confrontation between uh, the religious hierarchy, Jewish uh, hierarchy, and Jesus Christ. With this very question, who are you? Who gave you this authority? And at each point of time, even as they uh, came with various questions, Jesus uh, answered them very, very wisely. And uh, just before this particular uh, uh, passage, which is the final confrontation between the Pharisees and Jesus Christ, the Sadducees had come to Jesus Christ with a question about uh, resurrection. And Jesus answers them, uh, or he, he, he uh, uh, answers them in such a way that they are not able to say anything. And so now, uh, we see the Pharisees now coming. And they thought, let us... Uh, try to put a, a, a question to Jesus Christ so that we can trap him. And by this, uh, they were trying to do two things. You see here, it says that uh, the Pharisees got together and then one of them, an expert of the law, right? One was the cleverest of that particular group, an expert of the law who had studied the law in great detail. He brought a question to Jesus Christ. And what they thought is that uh, if you are able to put a question to Jesus Christ, which he is not able to answer or he answers incorrectly, we are going to kill two birds with one stone. Number one, we are going to show the Sadducees. Right? The Sadducees were another sect of the Jewish uh, religious hierarchy. And the Sadducees and the Pharisees were always at loggerheads with each other. So they thought, we'll show the, Phar the Sadducees that we are greater than you. That was, if, that was one intention. And secondly, if uh, Jesus answers wrongly, if we are able to trap him in some way, then uh, suddenly his following will uh, decrease and... Uh, uh, the, what really we want to do is that he should not be there that people start following us that also will be fulfilled with these two aims they came with a question to Jesus Christ and what is the question they are asking him it says uh, in verse 36 teacher which is the greatest commandment in the law now this may seem to be a very simple question and yet it was not a very simple question because uh, there are at least about 612 laws in the Old Testament. And picking out one would be very tricky. And there was always a possibility that if you pick out one, uh, it would be always be at the expense of another one, another law. And thereby, Jesus would be falling into a trap. But the answer Jesus Christ gave showed the in-depth knowledge that Jesus Christ had and through that answer also he, uh, he showed those people that uh, you may think yourself to be experts but uh, uh, you cannot put me in a trap. All right? I am much greater than what you are. The wisdom that I have is much greater than what you are. That is the first thing that he was trying to prove here. And what is the answer that Jesus Christ gave? Just see the answer there. It says... Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. What is Jesus Christ quoting here? He is quoting what is called the Shema. And what is the Shema? The Shema is uh, uh, that which the Jewish people would recite every day morning. And that is given in Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verses 4 and 5. If someone can just open that and read it, Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verses 4 and 5. Hear, O Israel, the Lord of God, the Lord is one. 
Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Okay, right? The Lord your God is one. Okay, and that says that there are no other gods before, besides uh, uh, the God of the Bible. Uh, that's one thing. And uh, secondly, of course, uh, they are saying that love this God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength and might and mind. Uh, every Jew would get up in the morning and the first thing that he would say is these words. Because uh, uh, these words were the fundamental practices of a Jew, which gave him his identity and which differentiated him from the surrounding idol-worshipping nations that were there. So it showed him who he was. And uh, when Jesus Christ uh, was quoting this uh, particular commandment, I think he was not doing anything wrong. Uh, he was, he was uh, hitting, I would say, at the, at the root of uh, who the Jew were. He was showing them, yes, what you're showing is, what you're doing is absolutely correct. And the Shema, my dear friends, what did it really show? It showed, it, all, it talked about the relationship that these Jews had with God. A commitment that they had uh, with God uh, by which they would love them. And how would they fulfill this particular law? This particular law that was there which they would say every day. They would uh, worship the Lord. They would go for worship when the, whenever that was required. And thereby they would, uh, they would fulfill this particular law. They would uh, give their tithes. They would give their gifts etc etc and that by this they they thought that we were fulfilling the full law of god are you getting me right this was the fundamental law for them and by joining in worship public worship you know they would go to the temple and worship there they would uh, uh, you know give their gifts they would bring their tithes and through this they thought that we are doing what god wants us to do now, do we also think in that particular way? That these are the things that God wants us to do. God wants us to worship Him. God wants us to bring us, uh, bring our uh, tithes to Him. God wants us to bring our uh, uh, gifts to Him. Or God wants us to thank Him for what He has done for us in our lives. And by doing all these things, we are fulfilling our duty towards God. Right? This is what we also think. And this is what the Jews were also thinking. Now, Jesus Christ does not negate what uh, they were doing but he adds another thing uh, to it right as he says there that along with this see what it says there this is the first verse 38 this is the first and greatest commandment and the second is like it love your neighbor as yourself okay the second is like it he is not saying the second is uh, uh, is uh, secondary to the first he is not demoting the second to the uh, as with respect to the first. He says the second is like it. It is, it is equal to the first. And what is that? He is quoting from Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 18 where it says, Love your neighbor as yourself. Okay? And uh, through this, what is he saying? Verse 39 or verse 40. All the law and the prophets uh, hang on these two commandments. Now, was what Jesus Christ was saying, love God and love your neighbor. This fulfills the total law. What these people were actually doing is, we are doing the first one, and by doing the first one, we are fulfilling the whole law. Now, was Jesus correct, my dear friends, in saying that you should be loving God and loving your neighbor? You have to be involved in worship and take care of people also. You know, you have to be... Uh, you have to bring your tithes and your uh, and your gifts to the Lord, but also take care of those who are vulnerable. Was Jesus Christ right in saying this? Well, if you see, when God saved uh, Israel, did he save individuals or did he save a nation? Let me ask you that question. He saved a nation, my dear friends. He did not save... Uh, just individuals, he, he saved a virtual nation, he saved the community of Israel. And uh, if you see uh, all the festivals of, uh, of uh, the Israelites, were they individual festivals or were they, uh, were they uh, community festivals? 
they were all community festivals they were never individual festivals whether they were uh, coming for the passover or it was the feast of the tabernacles or uh, uh, except maybe for the harvest every other festival was uh, uh, was a community festival meaning to say my dear friends that uh, god was actually saying yes you have to fulfill your law as far as i am concerned you have to bring your sacrifice your tithes and offerings which shows your devotion to uh, to me but along with that the lot of other uh, uh, other uh, laws that i have given which you need to fulfill as far as your community is concerned as an example uh, the law that we saw from leviticus chapter 19 and verse 18 where where god says love your neighbor as yourself okay love god and love your neighbor uh think about uh, the law of the sabbath okay i want you all to think about this and give me an answer the law of the sabbath my dear friends what does it fulfill does it fulfill or was god uh, what was god saying in the law of the sabbath uh does it fulfill devotion to god or does it fulfill obligation to uh, their fellow human beings what was the law of the sabbath okay devotion to god what was the law of the sabbath let me ask you that what were they supposed to do on the sabbath what is that what is that Settle down. No, no. Law of the Sabbath. Law of the Sabbath. Uh, the uh, seventh day of the week. What were they supposed to do? Rest and worship. What is that? Rest and worship. Rest and worship. All right. What did God say on that day? Keep the Sabbath holy. Okay. That means they were supposed to rest from their work. Okay. And be involved in worship. What other things they were supposed to do? What else were they supposed to do? give rest to your servants also to your slaves also even to your animals also what was that it was obligation towards 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 the community my dear friends obligation towards those who were working with them so the law of the sabbath you know when god says keep the law keep the sabbath holy it was devotion to god fulfilling the first uh, law it was it was uh, taking care of uh, those in need giving rest to those who were working with them so both uh, these things loving god and loving your neighbor is fulfilled in the law of the sabbath okay uh, there's some, there was something called the day of atonement okay this probably you all might not know uh, very clearly it was as given in uh, leviticus chapter 25 on the day of the on the day of atonement that was the day that people came and confessed their sins that was also the day of the jubilee the jubilee came once in 50 years and uh, anyone aware what is to be what was to be done on the day of the jubilee what was the law of the jubilee it came only once in 50 years day of atonement came of course every year okay but uh, on the in the 50th year the day of the jubilee and the day of atonement came together day of atonement was a day when people confessed their sins to the lord okay that relationship with god was established in a greater way what is the law of the jubilee all right let me tell you the law of the jubilee which came once in 50 years that was a day that any land that had been sold by a fellow jew to anyone else because he has he had fallen in bad days that had to be given back to the rightful owner free of cost are you getting me any land that was sold in those 50 years okay it may have been in the uh, 45th year it may have been in the uh, uh, 20th year which year year in those 50 years any land that was sold land was not supposed to be sold all right it could uh, only be sold if a person uh, went through a lot of financial trouble if he was in deep trouble then only he would sell that land okay in the on the in the 50th year on this day of atonement the land that was sold to anyone you know fellow one fellow selling it to another one 
it had to be given back to the rightful owner, to the original owner, free of cost. All right. What God said is, you took that land from him, and you enjoyed the harvest for so many years. So you have got, uh, you know, the return of your money. Okay. Now give that land back to him. Give him a chance once again to settle and uh, 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 to come up in life. He had, he has gone through bad times. Okay. That's why he sold his land. Now give it back to him so that once again he gets a chance to restart his life. Day of atonement and the day of the jubilee, both going hand in hand. What does it show? Devotion to God and uh, taking care of people, both go hand in hand. Are you getting me? Right? So, what Jesus Christ was saying, love God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Both these commandments go hand in hand when Jesus Christ was saying this, and he says that the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. He was absolutely correct. Think of the Ten Commandments. Okay? Uh, the Ten Commandments can be divided into two parts. Right? Uh, can you tell me... Uh, what could be the division in uh, the Ten Commandments? It can be divided into two parts. That's what I'm uh, giving you a hint. Now, what two parts can we divide the Ten Commandments into? Okay, which are which are the ones which is towards God? That is the first four. The first four, if you see, is towards God. Okay, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make any image of uh, any god. Uh, 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 keep the Sabbath holy. Don't take the Lord's name in vain. Okay, that's the first four. And then it comes, uh, honor your father and your mother. Do not steal, do not murder, so on and so forth. All right, so the Ten Commandments combines both these things. Devotion to God and uh, taking care of your fellow beings. Okay, so when Jesus Christ was saying that uh, by... Uh, when you are devoted to the Lord and you also are taking care of those who are in need, you are fulfilling all the commandments that are there. All the 612 commandments that are there. Okay? I just want you all to open to one particular verse, Micah chapter 6 and verse 8. And I want you to tell me whether both these things are fulfilled even there. Micah chapter 6 and verse 8. Anyone who's found it can read it. He hath showed thee, O man, what is good. And what doeth the Lord required of thee? But to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Okay. Right. It says there, He has told man what is good, and what uh, the Lord requires of you. And he says two things there. Number one is... Uh, to do justice and love kindness. Okay? To do justice and love kindness. That's one. And secondly, it says to walk humbly with the Lord. Both these things are there in that. Okay? To walk humbly with the Lord. Have a devotion with the Lord. That's number one. And secondly, it talks about doing justice and loving kindness. So, in answering this way, my dear friends, uh, Jesus had given a very fitting reply to those who had come to trap him. Hmm? We are told very clearly that the Pharisees got together and they would have chosen one person. He says, I am an expert in the law. Hmm? So, he being an expert, he said, let's put this question. And Jesus, you know, very shows very clearly that you may be an expert in the law, but I know something more than what you know about the law. And thereby he showed them that he was above them in every way. All the answer that he had given shows them that he knew more than what they knew. But Jesus was not satisfied, my dear friends, with uh, uh, just giving them that uh, answer. He wanted to uh, prove something more. And that is why he did not stop there. And so it says in verse 41, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them another question. And what is the question he is asking? What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? Till now, they were asking questions with uh, Jesus was answering. You know, uh, uh, very cleverly, very wisely. They were not able to trap him. 
But now Jesus yes, says, all right, you have done your bit now. Let me do my bit. Just put one question to you. And that question here is, what do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? Uh, and these people thought, we know the answer. We know the answer. So what is their reply? The son of David, they replied. They did not have to think much. Because uh, the word of God tells us that uh, the Messiah was going to be from the line of David. He is going, he is going to be a descendant of David. Now, where did they get this idea from? Anyone knows that particular verse where we are told that uh, uh, the Messiah would come from the line of David? Isaiah. Isaiah. Isaiah? It was given to David. All right, it was given in the time of David. Yes, Isaiah is much, much later. Okay, it's in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, where God had promised uh, uh, David that uh, your descendants are going to sit on your throne. And that's going to be an everlasting throne. Right, so uh, very clearly they knew that the Messiah was going to come from the line of David. So they replied it very, very, uh, without thinking, you know, they replied that, yes, we know that it's going to be from the line of David. Then Jesus Christ goes further. He said, how is it then that David, speaking by the Spirit, calls him Lord? Okay. For he says, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under my feet. What is Jesus Christ quoting? Which psalm is Jesus Christ quoting? Psalms 110. All right, Psalms 110 and verse 1. That is what Jesus Christ is quoting there. I think we need to know these uh, things. Right? If we really want to grow in God's word, these are things that we need to know. So Jesus Christ is quoting there uh, Psalms 110 and verse 1. And this particular psalm, who was the writer of that psalm? Anyone who's opened it can just uh, look at that uh, heading and tell me. David, all right, David has written this psalm. Okay, it is David who has written this psalm. And what is he writing? The Lord said to my Lord. Hmm? There are three people in this particular psalm, if you see. It says, first is David. So David is the one who is speaking. And he is talking about the Lord said to my Lord. And the two lords that are there, my dear friends, in uh, Greek, they are two different words. The Lord, the first one, is Yahweh. Yahweh said to my Lord. And the second Lord, my dear friends, the Greek word is Kyrios. Kyrios. Okay? So, Yahweh said to Kyrios. So, uh, and uh, the second Lord is supposed to be the Lord of David. The Lord said to my Lord. It's David's Lord. Okay? So, uh, and this psalm was taken to be a messianic psalm. Why? I'll tell you later. But then what Jesus Christ is then putting that question to uh, the Pharisees is, uh, you say that uh, uh, the Messiah is going to be the son of David. If he is going to be the son of David, how is it that he calls him Lord? Okay. And they were not able to answer him. Through that, what is he showing them? You may think you are too clever. You may think that you have studied the law. You may think that you know the Bible too well. But you do not know it as much as I do. I am different from you all. That's what he's showing. But he does not stop there. Because he is making a very profound uh, uh, point here uh, through this particular psalm. Uh, he is not only trying to outwit them, my friend. He is trying to teach something about the Messiah. And uh, we already said that uh, uh, the Messiah was going to be a descendant of David. Now, in the Jewish cult culture, no father would call his son Lord. Just keep that in mind. Okay? Even if you see uh, Joseph, the brothers, when they came to, uh, uh, to Joseph, you know, they called him Lord. You can turn to Genesis chapter 40 onwards. Okay, you'll see they call him Lord. But Jacob, my dear friends, who is uh, father, though 
you know uh, he uh, though joseph is still at the at the peak of his career he is the second in command as far as uh, egypt is concerned jacob does not call him lord because that was not the culture the father however big the son is uh, would never call him lord but here we see that uh, david calls him lord what does that show a uh, david knew very well that the descendant that i am talking about is far far someone far far greater than i am someone very far greater than i am and that is why he calls him lord uh who could this be just see what is said about about the person that uh, david is calling lord yeah uh, it says what is the second part of uh, verse 44 sit at my right hand until i put your enemies under my feet okay uh sitting at the right hand of god who could sit at the right hand of god jesus only he who was divine right we do not they do not uh, know jesus christ as uh, as uh, being the son of god in a way but uh, uh, only one who was divine could sit at the hand of uh, right hand of god okay also if you see uh, psalms 110 just open to that psalms 110 and verse 4 okay it says the lord has sworn and will not change his mind you are a priest forever in the order of melchizedek you are a priest forever in the uh, in the uh, uh, line of melchizedek who is melchizedek any idea who is this melchizedek he just comes very briefly in the old testament just once and his name is mentioned in the new testament at least two two, two times he's from abraham's time okay abraham had gone uh, the war that time he met the melchizedek all right abraham god had gone to uh, rescue lot and when he is coming back he just meets this person melchizedek all right and it says he is the priest of the most high god where did he come from yes. no one knows mm-hmm. right? no one knows he is of course king, called the king of uh, salem yes. but no one knows where he came from and where he went no one knows and uh, jesus christ is compared to the order of melchizedek not to the order of uh, of uh, Aaron okay Aaron was also a priest the first priest of uh, of uh, Israel he is not uh, said that you are from the line of Aaron you are from the line of Melchizedek you know it is said here and is also said in uh, uh, in Hebrews chapter 5 and in Hebrews chapter 5 the author is trying to prove just as Melchizedek we do not know his origin Jesus Christ also we do not really know his origin mean to say he is not from a human origin he has come from a divine uh, from he is a divine person so two things that uh, come out very clearly from psalms 110 sit at my right hand and i'll make you i'll make your enemies uh, you know i'll put your enemies under my feet that shows that uh, the person that is being talked about the person that david is talking about is divine also when he says you are going to be from the order of melchizedek David very clearly knows that he is going to be a divine person. So, when uh, Jesus Christ is quoting this particular verse to the Pharisees, he is expanding the whole idea of the Messiah. He is saying, "Yes, uh, you are saying that he is going to be from the line of David. That means he is going to be human, and I agree with that. But he is also going to be a divine person." so he is giving a new idea of the messiah here that the messiah that is going to come is going to be a human as well as a divine person the question my dear friends we should be asking is that just did jesus fulfill the condition of being human and divine if you see uh, revelation chapter 22 and verse 16 can this open to that and see what is said about there about jesus christ there
Revelation chapter 22 and verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David. Okay, I am the root and the offspring of David. Okay, I mean to say that, yes, when I came to, uh, came as Jesus, I was totally human. And if you look at the genealogies uh, that is that Matthew gives and also Luke gives, both of them, you know, trace the uh, the uh, uh, life tree of Jesus Christ right up to David and then uh, even up to Abraham. Okay, mean to say that Jesus was totally human in every way. But then, what does he say about himself in John chapter eight and verse fifty-eight? I just want you to look at that and tell me, and also explain to me. John chapter 8 and verse 58. Is it there? Yeah. Jesus said unto them, Very, very, I say unto you before Abraham was, I am. Okay. Jesus say, is speaking about himself. He says, Before Abraham was, I am. How would you understand that verse? He could have said, before Abraham, uh, what is that? Before Abraham was, I was. He doesn't say that. Before Abraham was, I am. Why does he say that? That is the name of the Lord. That is the name of the Lord. Which is, what is the name of the Lord? I am what I am. I am. I am, I am is the name that Yahweh, Jehovah, revealed to? Moses. To Moses. In uh, Exodus chapter 3 and verse 14, I think, okay, when Moses went to the burning bush and there he, uh, God met him and God told him, go uh, to Egypt to release your brothers. He says, what should I tell them? Who has sent me? And God reveals his name there. He says, I am who I am. How do you understand that particular uh, name of God? Why did he say, I am who I am? What is he meaning to say? Through that. He's the present, past, and the future. The Alpha and the Omega. He's the present, past, and the future. Why I am? Just think about I am. The present, past, and the future would be I was, I am, I will be. Right? He is now present. He is present. I am. What is that? Only one I am? Not really. There is no I was for me. There is no I will be. I am. Whether what I am today, that I, am, I will be tomorrow. What I was yesterday, the same I am today. For us, I was something yesterday. Today I am something else. Tomorrow I will be something else. Alright? We keep on changing. We are people who change constantly day by day, month by month, okay? We celebrated our 39th anniversary. So, what we were 39 years ago, what we are today, totally different, isn't it? Okay? Not so for God. What He was, what He is, what He will be, is all the same. He doesn't age. He doesn't grow, whether in age, or in any other thing, because he's perfect in every way. I am. And the word that, and the name that God used for himself in uh, Exodus chapter 3, is the name Jesus used for his own self. I am. Meaning to say, Jesus was totally human, and Jesus was totally divine. And if that name was just a claim of Jesus Christ, you know, what proved that he was uh, eternal, uh, that he was uh, divine is his resurrection hmm? because we know that uh, death could not overcome he who was eternal why did jesus get up from the dead because he is an eternal being think of even uh, moses you know we read from deuteronomy chapter 34 let's open to that for a few moments What it said, what is said about Moses uh, in Deuteronomy chapter uh, 34? Deuteronomy 
You see verse uh, 11 and uh, uh, 12. You know, I just want someone to read it. Bless his substance, the Lord, and accept the work of his hands. Strike the lines of those. No, no, which, which, which are you reading? 30, 30. No, no, 34, 34. Deuteronomy 34. Yeah. He was unequal for all the signs and the wonders that the Lord sent him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants and his entire land, and for all the mighty deeds and all the terrifying displays of power that Moses performed in the sight of all Israel. Okay, right? It says there was no one like Moses. There was no one like Moses, all right? And the words used for him performed awesome deeds. Okay? And uh, uh, no one has ever seen those mighty uh, deeds of mighty power. Moses is praised. Yeah, there was no prophet like Moses. And yet, what is said about him in uh, verse uh, 5 and 6? Just read it. Verse 5, yeah, same, same. Okay, TK. So verse 11 and 12 tell us the greatness of Moses. And yet this great man who had done mighty, mighty things, mighty power he had. He, uh, he, was, uh, he had done awesome deeds. What is said about him in verse 4? It said he died. He was buried. And that was the end of him. In spite of doing all great things, he died. But what about Jesus Christ, my dear friends? Okay, he is greater than even Moses because uh, he also did great things, but the greatness lies in this, that he rose up from the dead. That is who Jesus Christ is. And so, what we are trying to say is that Jesus was totally divine, he was totally human, and yet he was totally divine. And this uh, means, my dear friends, that uh, all that is said in Psalms 90, we read Psalms 90 today, and that is the only psalm that was written by anyone who knows who wrote Psalms 90? Only psalm that was written by Moses, that is attributed to Moses, right? Psalms 90. Okay, and what does he say about God? Just see verse uh, 2 and 3, just two verses we'll see. Okay, from everlasting to everlasting thou art God, the I am. Okay, that is said about God in verse uh, 2, verse 4 says, A thousand years in your sight like, are like a day that has gone by. That talks again about the eternity of God. And all these verses talk, that talk about the characteristic of God are attributed also to Jesus Christ. That is the greatness and the power of God, my dear friends. Uh, the question is that uh, we end this part with this particular question. Uh, if you are convinced that Jesus Christ was God, has it made any difference in your life? Has it made any difference in your ethical life, in your moral life, in your uh, uh, in what in your relationships? You know, in the way you think, the way you act, has it made any difference? There is one thing to say that Jesus was God, another thing, my dear friends, to accept Jesus as God. Just look at uh, Second Th uh, First Thessalonians. We read chapter two and verses one to eight is what we read, and see what uh, uh, Paul says about his own self there. Okay, I'll read a few verses for you all and just uh, I want you all to tell me what he thinks about his own self. You know, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and we read from verses 1 to 8 and see what he says in uh, verse 2. 
we have previously suffered and been insulted in Philippi. He is talking about suffering and getting insulted in Philippi. Why was he, why did he suffer and why was he insulted? What is the reason of uh, he getting insulted? Because of the gospel. Alright? And did he endure it or did he say that, no, no, this is not uh, okay. I need to just stop uh, giving the gospel now. What did he do? He kept on. Okay, he kept on. Look at uh, it further. As you know, but uh, with the help of God, we dare to tell you the gospel in spite of strong opposition. Even when they came to Thessalonica, there was strong opposition, yet he carried on. Okay, then uh, look at it further. It says, for the appeal we make does not spring from error or impure motives, nor are we trying to trick you. On the contrary, we speak as men approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. Uh, we are not trying to please men but God who tests our heart. Okay, we know, you know, we never use flattery, nor do we put a mask to cover up greed. God is our witness. What is he saying about, what is the, uh, what is it that you, uh, what about Paul would you come to know from these verses? What is he saying about his own self in these verses? Fearless missionary, okay. What else? They are pleasing only God and not the witness. Because God, God actually you know, testifying on the Okay, so he is uh, preaching the pure gospel. What else? He is not using flattery. There is no greed as such. He is not doing it for money's sake. There are a lot of other things that we can tell. Now, why did he behave like this? What made him behave like this? Yeah? He has encountered God and he has experienced his goodness in his life. He has encountered Jesus Christ. He has accepted the gospel in his life. The gospel has made a difference in his life. It is not only in his thought process. It is not only a gospel which has, which has reached his mind. Right? It has reached his heart and that is why there is a complete transformation of his heart. Hmm? If you read that further, it says, I was, a, I was like a gentle mother among you. He who was uh, persecuting the Jews at one point of time now talks of gentleness. Why? Because the gospel has transformed him. So, when we are thinking of this whole topic of who is Jesus, number one, if you are convinced, my dear friends, that Jesus was fully God and fully man and that he has died for your sin, the question we should be asking is, is this very uh, thought transforming you? Is it changing you? Is it making you more committed? Are you committed to uh, what Jesus Christ has, uh, has called you to do? And this commitment, my dear friends, if you are committed, it will be shown in, uh, uh, you know, whether you come for worship or not, okay, whether you come for the Bible study or not, whether you are involved in the work of God or not, it will, it will basically show there. Your very life, my dear friends, the, the reason of your living will be to, uh, uh, to bring glory to God and not work for your own self. Are you getting me? There has to be transformation if you believe that Jesus was fully God and fully man. Who has died for you all, or died for us. So think about it, my dear friends. Uh, has the gospel brought any kind of change into your life? Or is it just, uh, we have been Christians for so long, so, so it goes on. Think about it. May the Lord add his blessings to what we have heard this uh, morning. Let's bow down in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank and praise you, Master Lord, for your word this morning. Difficult as this passage may be, O God, uh, Lord, we believe that you have uh, 
unravel some mysteries for us, God, and we pray that uh, we may be able to think over these things, chew over these things, and uh, be convinced, O Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit, so that it may make a difference in our life, Master. We may begin to live for you, even as Paul started living for you. Yes, Father, we just commit ourselves in thy almighty arms. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we're going to sing one final uh, concluding hymn for today. Hymn number 219. Hymn number 219. He says, There's a name I love to hear, I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. We'll rise to our feet and join in the same. Is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh. Tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus! Oh, how I love Jesus! It tells me what my Father has in store for every day. And though I tread a darksome path, oh, all the way. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. It tells of one whose loving heart can feel my deepest woe, who in his sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. Oh, Father in heaven, we thank and praise the Master Lord for your goodness and mercy in our lives, the Master. And thank you for the wonderful time that we could have in worshipping you and hearing from you. Thank you that you are seated upon our praise this morning. And you have dealt each, with each one of us, God, uh, in a way which befits each one of us, Master. Father Lord, thank you for speaking to us. And Father, even as we go from here, we ask your blessings upon each one of us. All that we do, Master, may be used maybe for your glory and for the extension of your kingdom of God. Father, we just commit ourselves in thy almighty arms. He asks us all in the most precious name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now with the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest upon each one of us now and forevermore. Amen.